Season one, episode six, season finale, for all time, always, we have reached the end, thank God. And <laughs> honestly, I didn't even want to do this video. Like, after I watched the season finale, I really didn't want to do this video because I try my best to not be the, t and I've said this before, I try my best to not be the type of person, the type of YouTuber, if you will, that just goes on camera and just makes a video about, you know, trashing something and saying that it sucks, you know, just for the sake of getting, um, you know, getting likes because people like negativity, you know, and I try to, you know, and I try to only really talk about things that I'm interested in because if you if you don't like something, why waste the time and energy to talk about it if you don't like it? And I gave the show a chance, you know, like um, I, you know, I like the Loki character. I have nothing against the Loki character. I liked him in all the stuff that he's done in the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. But <laughs> now that he's gotten his own series, you know, things change. So I'm going to, I'm going to be as honest as possible. And again, and before I even get into it, this is basically all from my perspective. Like, you know, I don't, I don't sit in the writer's room with the Marvel people. Like, I don't like what I say isn't law. What I say isn't, you know, isn't canon, you know, like this is just my opinion. This is how I feel. So, <laughs> um, let's just go through this thing real quick and, you know, I'll talk about my, my issues, questions, comments, and concerns going forward. So, in in the in the final episode, well, in the last episode, uh, the two of them had broke through the purple smoke monster, and they found the kingdom to the one that controls the TVA and all the time variants. So you know, both Lokis they go in there to try to find the person. When they find the person, it you know, surprise surprise, everybody knows what it is right now. The person who they find sitting at the table is Kang, or a version of Kang. We all know that the, um, the actor, the guy who's playing Kang, he was also in Lovecraft Country, loved him in Lovecraft Country. He's, you know, he got hired, you know, by the Marvel Cinematic Universe to play Kang the Conqueror, and this is a version of him. He's um, the last one standing, as he put it, you know, like the, the, the only one that survived. I forget the term he used, but he's like the final one, the end all be all, and he lives at the end of time. So now, Sylvie, her whole thing was she got ripped from her timeline. She wants to find the person responsible and kill him. Loki, you know, he got ripped from his timeline and he's joining her on her quest. They're trying to find this dude and kill him. So they find the dude. And when we find him, I got a little annoyed at first because they, they basically made him some giggling, like goofy, like, oh my God, you know, like, like quirky, you know, type character. And it bothered me for like the first 10 seconds until I realized that's not actually Kang because we, I mean, we, we know Kang the Conqueror. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be Kang the Conqueror. He's supposed to be like some serious, you know, like I'm here to take over the world. Like no one can stop me type person. And this guy's all like goofy and jumping around, dancing on the table, doing all this funny stuff. But then like I said, but that, that's not actually Kang the Conqueror. And he he told his story thank goodness he told his story to you know to sylvie and loki which is basically you know there were different there are obviously different versions of him he said he's been known by different things he's been known as a conqueror he's been known as you know like the last one standing he's been known as like an, a an asshole he's <laughs> like it's like different things and he said that a variant version of him discovered a multiverse and at the same time that that version of him discovered the multiverse other versions of him those other versions discovered the multiverse too at the at the same time so they all traded information. They found out how to pass back and forth between different universes. They found out, you know, they can communicate with each other. They visited each other on each other's Earths. You know, they, they shared information. They shared knowledge. They were building things. They were trying to make peace. But then you had some, Kang the Conqueror, that wanted to rule because most people saw it as like, oh, 
pathways to different to different universes to different timelines different different you know different multiverses it's our way of sharing information and building a utopia of beauty others saw it as hey that's more worlds for us to conquer and we're going to take this bad boy over so then uh, he said a war broke out between the Kangs, like all the Kangs all across the multiverse. They got into this, you know, multiversal war that almost destroyed all of existence. So him, he, he, he said, but because of the different multiverses that branched, you know, due to this whole situation, that's what actually created this purple smoke monster. He said, um, the one that we're talking to that's sitting on the table, he said that he found out a way to harness the energy from that purple smoke monster because the purple smoke monster he eats timelines he destroys timelines he found out how to harness that person's that 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 smoke monster's energy and he used that smoke monster to cut off the branches if you will and destroy the other timelines of all the kings and he finally got everything like after he snipped all the branches he kept one timeline and he's controlling that timeline because he's the last Kang that's left. He's been pruning the timeline ever since. Anytime like a new timeline, you know, like stretches, he cuts it. So this way, no other versions of him can exist and we don't get this multiversal war. That's pretty interesting though, because in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, they spent the last season of Agents and S.H.I.E.L.D. in a different timeline because that's where Zeke ended up when everybody came back to the original timeline. But they try to act like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. don't exist, but that's a different story. So anyway, um, you know, so like I said, so he's been he's been in control of the timeline. Like he's he's the one keeping the one specific timeline. And he said the, whole, the sole purpose of it is for him to make sure that other versions of him don't pop up because if they do, we're going to get another war in their hands. And then, you know, Sylvia was just like, so, you know, so, so why did you bring us here? And he was just like, honestly, bitch, I'm tired. <laughs> and he's, and he's just like, yo, he said, I've been, he said, I've been keeping the timeline safe for centuries and eons and eons. He was like, yeah, I'm tired. He's like, I'm done. He's like, I, 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 I need to do something else. He's like, I live here by myself. I'm tired. Of, you know, he's, 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 like, he's, he's, he's tired. I mean, honestly, he could have actually gone and like spoke to the TVA. He could, he could have did something to have like, that was built. That was bullshit because he could have did something. He could have brought the TVA to where he was. And you know, this way he could have been around more people, but he chose to isolate himself. And now he's just at a point where he's just sick of it. He ends up telling the Lokis, he was just like, yo, I want the two of you to basically take my place. He said the TVA is necessary because the TVA is what controls the branches and keeps the timeline from spitting out of control. And he was just like, you know, not one, but two Lokis, which is rare. He said, you two are the perfect, the two perfect people who can take my place. He was like, you have a choice. He said, either take my place and be the new rulers of all space and time and I'll go retire somewhere and, you know, do some other shit. He was like, or you can, you can kill me. And then if you kill me, the timelines are going to disperse out of control. More like alternate versions of me are going to pop up. There's going to be another multiversal war. And then all life on existence is going to be threatened and everybody's going to die. And then he was like, plus, if you kill me once, once you kill me and all those timeline branches start, start sprouting again, he's like, I'm gonna come back to life anyway. And you're going to see me again. So he was, you know, so he was just like, you might as well just take the throne and just control the TVA. You be in charge of the TVA and you keep my life's work going. So Sylvie, right out the gate, she was just like, this is bloody, this is bloody bullshit. And she basically tried to kill him because she can't get past her own, like, you know, her own anger. She can't get past her own hurt. And Kang even said to her at one point, he was just like, yo, grow up. You know what I'm saying? He was like, what's going on is bigger than you. Um, Loki tried to stop her because he was just like, listen, he actually has a point. And then she was like, hey, you just want the throne, you sadistic boss. And he was just like, nah, it's not about the throne. But he's like, this is bigger than us. And what he's saying is you know, we could be, because the, the way he, the way Loki looked at it, he was just like the two of us together, because we hate the TVA and what the TVA stood for and how they went about doing business. He said, you and I, if we control it, we can actually do it the right way. He said, we can do it in a way where we're not wiping people's minds clean. He was like, yo, we can figure out how to make it work for everybody. But she wasn't trying to hear that. Like, you know, and then he told her, and it's, and it's not like he said like, oh, this is the ultimate to more else. You know, he flat out told her, he was just like, listen, let's just take a moment, sit down and talk about what he just put on the table. And she wasn't trying to hear it. The two of them got into a fight. And then after they got into a fight, you know, she was just like, why can't we see things the same way? And then he was like, because you don't trust and I can't be trusted. The two of them shared a kiss. And then she kicked him into a portal and knocked him back into the TVA. And then, you know, because she, she basically made up her mind. She doesn't care about the universe as a whole. She just wants to get her petty revenge. And then, you know, she walked up to him and then she was like, aren't you going to beg for your life, you bastard? And he was just like, nope, because if you kill me, I'll just see you tomorrow. And then she stabbed him. And that was very anti climactic because once she killed him it was just like all right you spent six episodes pining over this dude's death 
once you kill him, it's like, okay, now what? <laughs> and then, and like, you could even see the look on her face when she did it. Like, you could tell she didn't feel better. You can, nothing changed. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's why in, in like, we've been, we've been listening to this. Anybody who watches superhero anything, you know the whole story about revenge. There's always somebody that wants revenge, wants revenge. And there's always another person that's like, I understand you want your revenge, but getting your revenge doesn't change anything. It doesn't make the situation better. And the reason why you're pissed off and want your revenge, it's not going to change that either. Nothing's going to magically go away. Now, if she was smart, she would have taken the job and she could have used the job to realter her life so she didn't have to go through what she went through. But that's a different story. So then, she, like I said, she killed the dude. Nothing happened. She didn't feel any better. And she basically just sat Indian style at the void of time loki ended up going back to um the tva and then um mobius was there the black chick was there and then they were just like oh and then they saw on the tv screen all the different timeline branches that are spreading out so now that the new branches are spreading out more timelines are coming all the different kings are coming back and now we're gonna get the multiverse the multiverse of madness and then dr strange is gonna be involved and blah 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 um there was one thing one thing about the episode that i actually do find interesting is is the judge the girl that i keep saying look like carrie washington she plays the judge they did this whole thing with her where they went back to three years ago 2018 and when the black woman was being chased by other tva soldiers she found i don't know they, they went like i guess before she became a variant she used to be a teacher at a school she brought the tva soldiers to the school so they can see her and you know who she used to be before she became um, a tva member and they showed her that she was a teacher at a school so then when when the soldiers saw her he was like oh judge it's you and then she was like she's not the judge and then she was just like yo there's a lot you need to know and they never explained that they never explained is she a clone was this what she doing before you know she got to the tva what made her timeline branch off into a different like we didn't get any answers for that and now i kind of actually want to know what happened to her. i want to know her story now so unless i miss something <laughs> like she's the only character that i'm actually like that's the only storyline that i really care about because i, I kind of want to know what happened to her and how she became you know to be where she is and why she was a teacher and like all this other stuff so but then even then the version of her that's the judge, her Mobius got into it, and then, you know, she ended up leaving. Like, she got some files on some stuff. She got some files on stuff that Kang gave her because she asked that little clock cartoon thing for specific files. The clock gave her different files. She was like, these, then she was like, these aren't the files that I asked for. She was like, yeah, but, you know, Kang thought you, you could use these files better. And when her Mobius was talking, she even said to him at one point, you know, because he was just like, oh, we can't take away people's free will. And she was like, the only person who has free will is the person in charge. And, you know, obviously talking about Kang. And then when she decided to leave the TVA, Mobius was like, where are you going? And she said, I'm going to search for free will, which either means she's either going to search for Kang because Kang is the only person in her opinion who has free will, or she's going to kill Kang so she can be in charge and she can be the only person with free will. She's the only storyline that I actually really care about. And if there is a season two, I'm only going to watch it to see what the hell happens with her. I don't even know why we're getting a season two, but that's a different conversation for a different day. So then, you know, so then, and then after that, like Loki came back, he was talking to Mobius, he was talking to the black chick, and then he was just like, oh, he's like, the timelines are out of control, you know, like we're about to have a multiversal war on our hands. And then he looks out of the window and he sees a statue of Kang the Conqueror, and that's how the show ended. And then they said that, and then they said that Loki will return in season two. And I was like, why? So that was it. That was how the episode ended. Uh,. As a whole, the series as a whole to me was very boring. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm not saying it sucked. I'm not saying, oh, this whole thing was trash. I'm saying for me, it was just very boring. The fact that they showed us Kang the Conqueror, because everybody's, because people, a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's so amazing. They gave us Kang. Okay, fine. Was it cool to see him? Yes, because we didn't get any real big bads in WandaVision and and people were speculating all these different things and nothing, nothing, you know, nothing ended up coming to that. So to actually see someone who's going to be like a big cinematic villain on a TV series, it was cool. It was cool to see the introduction of the character of Kang the Conqueror. It was it was cool to see the actor, you know, who will be playing Kang the Conqueror. But just because we got Kang the Conqueror doesn't mean the episode was a good episode. It doesn't mean the series as a whole. It's like now all of a sudden it was a great series because you got one cool appearance by one character. And that, you know, and it's the same thing how I feel about Captain America Civil War. I am not high on Captain America Civil War. The only good things about Captain America Civil War was T'Challa 
and the actual storyline beef between Iron Man and Captain America. Zemo's plan was trash and it was unrealistic and it was stupid. And a lot of people that like Civil War only like it because of the airport scene with all the superheroes. Just because you get an airport scene with 16 superheroes does not mean the entire project was great. And, and like I said, like just because we got Kang the Conqueror in episode six, that doesn't erase the fact that the, that the, the series as a whole, to me, was boring. We didn't need a Loki series because I, I understand what they're trying to do. Again, from a cinematic standpoint, they're about to do the multiverse of madness. They're about, and when it comes to the multiverse, there are a lot of things that need to be explained. I'm the type of person, I'm a DC fan. I like Marvel, I like DC. If I had to pick between the two, DC over Marvel, but you know, I do, I do appreciate both. DC does the multiverse all the time, that's their thing. If you watch The Flash, <laughs> if you watch Legends of Tomorrow, you understand how the multiverse works. If you watch the crisis, you know, if you watch the crisis crossover, the six episode crisis crossover that the CW did, you understand how the multiverse works. You get the basic, con you get the concept of the multiverse. And because I watch DC and because I know DC and because I'm a huge DC fan, I understand how the multiverse works. So now when I'm watching Loki, it's just six episodes of them explaining something to me that I already know and now I'm bored as hell. You know, like the TVA is basically Legends of Tomorrow. Like, well, Legends of Tomorrow before Constantine showed up because now the whole show is about magic. But when, when Rip Hunter was on the show, the, you know, like the Time Bureau was basically the TVA. So I understand all this already. That's why, that's why I'm saying if you're a person who doesn't watch DC, if you're a person who does watch DC, maybe you don't watch The Flash or maybe you never watch Legends of Tomorrow or maybe you don't watch other projects, you know, that are DC related because DC does the multiverse all the time. They had an animated movie, Crisis on, you know, Crisis on, um, on, on, on Two Earths. So, you know, so like if you don't, but if you like the Loki series was for the casual fan who's not really big into all this stuff and they only watch Marvel because everybody else watches Marvel and they swear they're a huge Marvel fan. So like Marvel's whole thing was before we give y'all the multiverse of madness, we're going to come out with a six episode series and we're going to spend six episodes basically explaining to everybody what the multiverse is or better yet, what their rules are for a multiverse, but they're pretty much the same rules as like everybody else. It's kind of like time travel. Every, for the most part, everybody's time travel rules are pretty much the same. doesn't matter who's doing it, you know? So that, that's what it was. Like it, the, the show, it was, for, it was this, this series was for the casual, per, it was for the casual fan. It was for the casual person. It was for people that don't know anything about a multiverse. You got six episodes of them explaining the whole damn thing. So then when you finally do watch the Doctor Strange movie, you're not gonna be confused. Like what's a variant and why are there two of them? And what are branches? It's like, now we know all that stuff. And I'm just like, we didn't need six episodes for that y'all could have just gave us like a one hour a one hour special on disney plus that would have explained the whole thing like you could have just gave us like a loki movie or so like i didn't need six episodes of this and the fact that we're getting a season two i'm just like why <laughs> like i don't need i don't need to know that like i don't need to know it was just so unnecessary it just dragged on for it just felt more like a cash grab like they dragged it i feel like they just dragged it out for no reason and because of that like i said and because i already know about the multiverse like I said, I was just bored throughout the entire thing. And there was nothing about this. Like I said, there were a lot, there, there was, there were a lot of aspects of it that were cool, but overall, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, Oh, Loki was so amazing. Cause it really wasn't, but, but it did the job that it was supposed to do. It introduced Kang and it explained to the casual fan how the multiverse works. So I guess in that regard, mission accomplished. So <laughs> that was it. And uh, thank you for tuning in. You know, like normally I don't like to rant, but you know, like I said, that's, that's, that's just how I feel. But share your thoughts below. You know, like, let me know, do you agree with anything that I said? If you don't agree, that's perfectly fine. Like if you're someone that liked it, fine. If you liked it, you liked it. Tell me why you liked it. You know, I can, cause I can tell you why I did it. <laughs> and I'm not just going to say like, oh, I'm a DC guy. So f to hell with Marvel. No, like I like Marvel, but I have act. But if I do, if there's something I don't like, I have legitimate reasons as to why I personally don't like it. But if you did like it, let me know why you liked it. Share your thoughts in comments below. Like I said, let's just, like I said, you know, there's no arguments. Like nobody's hating on anybody. Like nobody's going to be attacked. We're just sharing our thoughts, opinions, and, you know, and concerns. Cause that, that's what it's all about. It's just all about having the conversation and enjoying something. Because even if you love it or you hate it, we all love talking about this stuff anyway. So as long as we continue to talk about it and we keep getting this, the stuff that we're getting, it's all gravy. I will say at this point, between all the Disney Plus shows that have come out, Marvel shows that have come out so far,
Falcon and Winter Soldier was definitely my it was def, to me was definitely the best so far because like I said I really didn't like Loki. WandaVision started off bad, got good in the beginning, and then I didn't like the ending. So I was kind of like 50-50 on WandaVision, but I actually did like Falcon and Winter Soldier. So for me, it's like Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and then Loki. So we'll see what happens with the next project. I think it's either What If or it's um, the Hawkeye series. And that's kind of personal for me because I like Arrow, so Hawkeye better deliver. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. So thanks for tuning in, guys. It's like I said, yeah, you know, when the next pro when the next Marvel project comes out, you know, we'll review that as well. And I said, we'll, we'll see. We can piece all this stuff together. Eventually, I will do a Black Widow review. I just haven't watched Black Widow yet. Check out my other videos like Superman and Lois, like the flash legends of tomorrow and you know we got star girl coming up and titans so until i guess until season two now loki <laughs> take care guys and for glorious purpose thanks for watching thanks for tuning in for the loki journey with me you know we served our purpose and until season two until next time as always check me out and i'm out this Beep.